What up, nerds, and welcome to the most difficult episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 356, recorded on Monday, January 31st, 2022. Tonight, we're going to be talking about another Patreon pick. This was chosen by Kelvin C. The movie is Solo or The 120 Days of Sodom from 1975. Before we get into the review, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Washington, D.C., we got our boy, Randu. What's up, man? What's up, buddy? How's it going? It's going pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. The mood is so light it's, these days around the straight chilling offices. It's light because I just dropped a 10 pound deuce. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, well, you know, <laughs> well, very thematic of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, last but not least, calling in from Jacksonville, Florida, we got our boy Soju. What's up, man? What up? It's your boy, Duke Stains. <laughs> Is that because you are a Duke? The Duke. Yeah. The oh, they, Duke. I said poop stains. I was like, man, we're really going to just ride that one. No. Just, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The Duke. The stains. Le, uh, no, Le I Duke. think poop might be better. <laughs> Le, Duke. <laughs> Le Duke. It works on a couple different levels. Je m'appelle Le Duke. Uh, <laughs> this is an I Italian guess, yeah, film. I guess that's true. I, I can't speak <laughs> Italian. <laughs> Miss Cousy. That's all I got. <laughs> This, this one time, Justin and I went to Italy, and we stayed in this camp in uh, Venice, and it was run by Australians, and everybody spoke English, and there were sumo wrestlers, and it was great. <laughs> Got a real cultural wow. experience there. That's a true yeah. story. That's <laughs> Just digging real deep into the culture, huh? <laughs> real Italian, the whole thing. <laughs> Bring me some spaghetti, Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sumo you. What? What an experience. Uh, oh, we also, man. they didn't provide us with towels. They, so we had to drive off with our seats and just sleep on plane beds. <laughs> you guys just don't really understand the style over there. You really just weird. don't. We, we could not drip dry. We didn't have the time. Interesting. European style. European style. Oh, yeah. What a wild trip. Um. Anyways... Uh, Let's go ahead and get into some housekeeping before we tackle the main event. Um, so this is the last day of January, and at the time of this recording, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night has definitely won our February poll pick. So, All right. Thanks to everybody that voted. Uh, looks like we're going to be talking about a dope vampire film in the near future. Okay. Uh, that, of course, does mean we've got a brand new poll pick posted on our Patreon website. Our March poll pick is currently up there. Whoa. The theme for March is Nasty Nola, and the three movies to vote between are The Skeleton Key, Interview with a Vampire, and The Beyond. Hey, Bob. Yo. Do we have any numbers to consider at this point? We don't have numbers, but maybe we should explain the theme real quick. That's probably a good idea. (laughs) Nasty (laughs) Nola. What? I mean, that's that's not- You can always- that's not you can clear. always tell when Rob writes it. <laughs> yeah. It's not clear to everyone who's listening. It's, it's not crystal clear. That's just perfect branding. <laughs> uh, so uh, this year, Mardi Gras is actually falling on March 1st. Fat Tuesday is March 1st this year. Uh, so we decided to make our March poll pick three movies that are all set in the beautiful city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Hey. Hey. Who are you calling Tuesday? <laughs> uh, sorry. Continue. Fuck Marty. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the skeleton key interview with the vampire and the beyond, uh, get your votes in. Let's see. Let's see, uh, what people want to want to watch, man. I see Dude, the beyond. I, I went rifling through my, my DVD collection and I still do have a DVD of the beyond, which is maybe wow. the most valuable and hard to find DVD I own. There you go. Specifically because I got it in a Reddit exchange, which is just, I don't know. Maybe it makes me happy to get some good you. use out of it. Proud of you. I mean, I, I'm not sure, but I'm. 
pretty sure that the case is missing. So oh, no. It's oh. resale value. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's not pristine. I've got it on a the baby secondary blue. market. Why <laughs> don't we think about the secondary market? <laughs> Randy is beating the shit out of his desk. I can hear it. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Get your votes in before the end of February, the month that hasn't started as as of this recording, <laughs> uh, and we'll see what we're talking about in March. Um. In other Patreon news, we have a brand new mini cast dropping this Friday. That's uh, February fourth. Um. If you support us at the ten dollar level or above on our Patreon, you get access to a whole back catalog of Patreon exclusive episodes. Uh, this mini cast is about a movie from last year called the medium juice. You were talking about that. I did. I brought it up at least once on what you've been watching. It is an Indonesian horror film. It is about possession and it's pretty interesting. It's on shutter. Um, so it's pretty easy to check out if you subscribe there. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, one of my talking points is it's really interesting to watch a exorcism film that's not based solely around the idea of Christianity mm-hmm. or, you know, the priest coming in and that is know. nice. Yeah. So, I mean, we got a, we got kind of some of that in the wailing, but other than that of the movies we've covered, you know, it's all kind of steeped in, you know, Christian lore and, and that kind of idea. And so it is, it's just interesting to see it from another culture and religions perspective. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, I dug on that aspect of it. Nice. Give the Catholics a little bit of a break. You yeah. Know, and uh, see take what, a break. See what's Let's going the, on. Let the shamans handle it first, Coach. The shamans. <laughs> shamans. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, if you want to hear Justin's thoughts on the medium, you can find that on our My Patreon. Thoughts. On our Patreon. T H O T S. Justin's thoughts are unknowable. <laughs> wow. What a Gen Z joke to make. I'm prou- proud of you, buddy. You're really cashing in on that joke. I'm young. I know, we know. Um, yeah, check that out on our Patreon website. Um, the only other thing I've got to mention is we've got a brand new uh, Joe Bob watch party coming up, actually. Joe Bob. Uh, is doing his thing Friday, uh, February 11th at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, He's doing a double feature uh, in honor of Valentine's Day. He's calling it his Heartbreak Trailer Park. Um, If you have not joined in on our Joe Bob watch parties in the past, it's really easy. Um, Friday night, just before showtime, I drop uh, a link to join a Zoom chat slash watch party on all of our social media outlets it's it's free you just click on the link and all of a sudden you're in the party watching joe bob and chatting with a bunch of people of like minds and it's a lot of fun and uh, if you want to join mark your calendars old dick bibbs is at it again huh dick bibby you know what dick I, bibbs I, is at it again <laughs> i was a little i'm a little worried about that title though because there might be some rob zombie films featured on there anytime the trailer part <laughs> huh. comes up i, I get worried of... that rob zombie might be involved as you should yeah you should fret i <laughs> am worried lose sleep since i run the joe bob segment and dedicate so much <laughs> so time to much watching as <laughs> i'm worried you should be and, <laughs> Honestly, a Rob Zombie movie would be better than some of the shit that he does show. I'll be honest. Like Gator Bait, not my favorite. I'll be like, nobody watched Gator. Wow, Bait. strong words for Gator Bait. Gator Bait. Uh, <laughs> Roll Tide. Roll Tide. <laughs> okay. Ooh, southeast jokes. All right. Yeah, that's all I got. Do you guys have any <laughs> other uh, housekeeping? Anything? My house is clean no. this week. All right, our houses are clean. All right, let's get into the main event. We're talking about Sallow, and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? (laughs) All righty then. Sallow or the 120 Days of Sodom. From 1975, uh, this was written and directed by Pierre Paolo Pasolini. That stars a whole bunch of wonderful Italian names that I'm not going to butcher for you here and now. Uh, The plot synopsis uh, brought to you by IMDb is as follows. In World War II Italy, 
Four fascist libertines round up nine adolescent boys and girls and subject them to 120 days of physical, mental, and sexual torture. Um, Joe Wangs, I, f- I know we none of us had seen this before. I'm not going to ask that question. Real quick, silly question. Would you recommend people check this out? Randy, kick us off. There isn't a bigger no on earth. I, I swear it's not possible to recommend this less. Um, the answer is no. I'm just going to leave it at that. Gotcha. Juice, what about you? No. Okay. Yeah, that's a big fat no for me as well. Uh, it's about the firmest no I've ever given on the yeah. show, and I think maybe us collectively. Yeah, that's a huge no from the Straight Chilling crew. Uh, so this is going to be sort of a different show, uh, just to let everybody know here at the top. Um we're going to give like a big, huge content warning before we like really dive into this movie. Uh, the, the, the content of the film itself is very unpleasant. It deals with, um, sexual, uh, abuse, uh, physical abuse, humiliation, murder, terrible things. Um, also as, after we all watched the movie, we started to do some research as we always do. And found out some like very unfortunate things about the director that we just didn't know about, um, and we kind of want to like lay all that out up up front here before we try and talk about this movie, um, and we just want to like give a warning, let everybody know up front about all of that stuff before we start talking about it. Um, so yeah, I've got so- sort of like a write up kind of that uh, outlines all the stuff that we found out about the director. Um, that I feel like is important for people to know, especially if you're considering watching Solo, um, so that you kind of avoid falling into the same situation that we found ourselves in. Because I feel like this movie is notorious. Everybody knows about Solo, right? It's like one of well, the one of the most difficult movies to yeah. watch in the abstract. In the abstract, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So abstract. like your mom might not, but like you do, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I do. So this movie is no, the reason I know about this film is because I frequent the horror genre, and because yeah. I, and I feel like. Most people who do have had a moment or even people who just enjoy film in general might have a moment where like, what are the most extreme, shocking, crazy films that you can still get a hold of in a legal sense, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that and this one is always on those lists, usually toward the tops of those lists. And that's where I know this from. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 mostly featured in conversations with a Serbian film and other things like that. Sure. Yeah. So if you know about those, that's where we're headed. But somehow worse. I don't know it as a masterpiece criticism of fascist Italy right? no. in nineteen yeah. forty. So mm. I I mean I I will say let's like, get to that in a minute. <laughs> this this movie is notorious and it's moderately well known. It's very easy to find in the states. Criterion put it out on DVD. They also put out another edition of it on Blu-ray. It's, it's, it's difficult to find streaming, but if you want to buy a physical copy, it's pretty easy to find. Um, and I feel like when people talk about this movie, they just talk about the content of it and not the context surrounding the movie and uh, the director's life. And I feel like uh, we want to take this opportunity to shed light on that. So I've got, like I said, I've got kind of like an outline of some stuff that we found out about the director that I want to read. It's unpleasant. Again, please be aware of that. Um, so let's. I'm going to get into that before we talk about the movie real quick. Uh, again, director's name is Pierre Paolo Pasolini. He was born in 1922, died in 1975. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly died in 1975. He was allegedly born. Um, <laughs> he he, he was, may have hatched. This is all alleged. He was known around town for his examination of taboo sexual matters, generally speaking. Allegedly, allegedly, I'll say. Um, So there was factually a small scandal that broke out during a local festival in September 1949. Uh, Somebody informed the local sergeant of sexual conduct uh, performed by Pasolini with three youngsters aged 16 and younger after some dancing and drinking. Apparently they were uh, masturbating together. Uh, The sergeant drew up a report and the informer elaborated publicly on his accusation, sparking a public uproar. A judge charged Pasolini with, quote, corruption of minors and obscene acts in public places. He and the 16 year old were both indicted. Uh, The next month, when questioned, Pasolini would not deny the facts, uh, but instead chose to talk about a literary and erotic drive and cited Andre Guide, the 1947 Nobel Prize for Literature Laureate, uh, according to... Allegedly. Allegedly. According to Pasolini, 
the Christian Democrats instigated the entire affair to smear his name. Um, he was then fired from his job. Uh, in 1963, Pasolini met, quote, the great love of his life, which was a 15-year-old boy named Ninetto Davoli, whom later uh, Pasolini cast in his 1966 film, The Hawks and the Sparrows. Uh, Pasolini then became uh, the youth's mentor and friend. Uh, Pasolini was later and s- became his friend. I want to point that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then became his friend. Then um, Pasolini was later assassinated on the second of November, nineteen seventy-five, on the beach of Ostia. He had been run over several times by his own car. Uh, multiple bones were broken, and his testicles were crushed by what appeared to be a metal bar. An autopsy revealed his body had been partially burned with gasoline after his death. The crime was long viewed as a mafia-style revenge killing one extremely unlikely to have been carried out by only one person. Later, Giuseppe Pelosi, uh, who was then a 17-year-old boy and reportedly a prostitute, was caught driving Pasolini's car and confessed to his murder. He was convicted in 1976. Um, 29 years after that, on May 7, 2005, Pelosi retracted his confession, uh, which he said had been made under the threat of violence to his family. He then claimed three people with, quote, a Southern accent had committed the murder, um, insulting Pasolini as a, quote, dirty communist. Other evidence has been uncovered in uh, 2005, suggesting that Pasolini had been murdered by an extortionist. Testimony by his friend Sergio Chitti indicated that some of the roles from the uh, Salo film had actually been stolen and that Pasolini planned to meet with the thieves on the 2nd of November, 1975, the day of his murder. Uh, There is also some speculation that some of the actors in Salo are not of legal age, um, being that Pasolini hired primarily models and not actors to star in this film. Uh, There is little information to be found on some of the actors. Uh, Regardless, uh, just knowing the proclivities of the director and the content within the movie Salo, um, it's just sort of colored in in a really terrible light even worse so than we already knew going into it um given some of the overlaps between pasolini's life and the content of salo it just seems somewhat impossible to separate the art from the artist in this instance and our car our conversation going on is going to kind of reflect that um and like i already mentioned like the movies is it's infamous for its shocking images and unfortunately it's just not infamous for uh the life and choices of its director and we wanted to make sure that everybody who chooses to listen to the rest of the show or chooses to watch this movie is fully informed of that it just seems like it's not discussed enough so that is now out of the way there we go yes yay (laughs) yay (laughs) fun Um, fun straight chilling podcast yeah. Yay. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> the gonna... I, yeah. The idea behind this is this that this is a film that can be purchased. It is you know Criterion Collection. It was banned in many countries uh, for many years, and then I guess over the past twenty or so years, it's been lifted and made available through purchase through physical media and stuff like that. But the idea is that this is potential child pornography in some ways. Um, mm-hmm. Or I mean, and. In, a, in, in a the only way, sense, yeah. Um, <laughs> Potentially, there, uh, there. So, like these, these are claims that have been made that are very alarming. That we have not found definitive or conclusive evidence yeah. of that. However, if you choose to watch this movie, you should know that before you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we were not aware of. That. We were not at yeah. all. Yeah. No. Also, <laughs> multiple. Sorry, go ahead. I, I just wanted to like make very clear, like Kelvin, the guy, like all loved Kelvin. This was news to Kelvin. Mm-hmm. I yeah. feel like this is news to probably most people listening to this episode. So we're not trying to throw Kelvin under the bus. No, whatsoever. no, 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 no. We're yeah. not throwing it. And there's, but, yeah. Go ahead. This is a movie that like a lot of people like. A lot of people defend this movie uh, for its content, and you know, all, like you know, setting aside whether I agree with that or not most of them i would wager are not really fully aware of what's going on yeah i gotta think so i gotta hope so um about what was going on behind the scenes because i don't know about for them maybe not but for me that deeply affected my reading of this movie (laughs) um and it was not it was something that i you know this is the only movie ever watched for the podcast or maybe ever that i full-on totally regretted watching because of these things and, you know, I, I don't want anybody to go away without that knowledge in advance because it would have really helped me out. 
<laughs> yeah, for sure. So. We would have just avoided it at that point. But yeah, uh, we, I mean, it's the same thing. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, like it, th- this is. There's been a lot of like hay made around like uh, Jeepers Creepers three and all that. Like the things going on behind the scenes there. People won't review yeah. it. Won't touch yeah. it. Won't do anything with it. And you know that this is this is kind of that for me i mean because of these things and as much as we can't verify some of the some of these things and you know it's a lot of it's going to just be lost to history unfortunately yeah i all like there is some comfort cold comfort maybe in knowing that you know criterion published this it is legal in multiple countries hopefully i'm praying that that's because somebody did the due diligence that we are unable to do as non-researching just movie fans we're not even professional anything with movies so we're hoping on that but at the same time i i know for a fact that i have watched a a, a rendition of romeo and juliet with underage breasts (laughs) in it i know that it happens and especially it's it's willing to be overlooked in terms of like art house shit yeah. Like there seems to be like people will willingly allow it to pass through for fear of censorship claims and things like that when it's artsy enough. And this movie certainly has that reputation. Me and Randy, man, we had that same English class in ninth grade for reals. Mm-hmm. Um, Did well, that's I? True. I mean, I, we were at the Mrs. same school. Miss Huff? Class. Or Ms. Huff? No, I didn't think I had Miss Huff. Okay. No. Um, well, I dodged that bullet, I guess. Anyway, I, but I knew exactly what he was talking about when he mentioned it because um, yeah. I also saw that. That was the little bit of comfort that I had in reflecting on this after the fact because nobody wants to be told like yeah you just watch child pornography or i mean or even some people really want to know that well yeah and but but the (laughs) thing is is like i had to think like well i know that this was banned and that countries individually you know have their own standards and stuff like that and one by one by one it was but however the accu or the potential that some of mm-hmm. these actors and actresses were as young as 14 still makes you feel greatly uncomfortable because yeah. even if there's a chance a potential to where it's like nobody really knows or or will ever know that's troubling especially yeah. given this guy's history and you know what can you know i don't know what was going on behind the scenes and stuff like that the content of this movie is is troubling with that potential involved you want to think that this is like most movies where everything is you know it's a facsimile it's everything is faked and there are certainly elements of like you know movie quote unquote for lack of a better term movie magic going on with things in this movie just like any other but you know there are things that like go beyond that <laughs> that we that may or may not be true but it, it's honestly just the suggestion that it's true is enough for it to really kind of overpower my desire to know more about what this movie is trying to do yeah. i feel the same way we so i i do have a plot synopsis typed up but i think like our conversation on this movie is really primarily going to revolve around uh, the director the state of mind he might have been in and like why he made some of these choices like it does like discussing the themes of this movie and like really analyzing this movie feels so secondary after finding out all this information like the context it of feels this movie. complicit to do that it, honestly, yeah to yeah some actually that's probably a better descriptive word there yeah it's just like what like why bother and even to the point where like we had some serious discussions throughout the week like should we even do this show and we decided that like you know if nothing else if nothing else at least somebody listening will be better informed and will be able to make a better decision about whether or not they think watching this movie is right for them if you know so like it's somewhat of a psa i guess you could say maybe we can save somebody from watching this movie uh the way we did and then find out all the terrible shit after the fact you know let me um also just just to put uh, the finest point possible on it yeah this is not an endorsement of this movie correct period I, want, I as if that wasn't clear enough i just want to state it for facts we sake. do not recommend we don't we don't endorse or recommend this movie and we don't i don't know like it's it's for the benefit of people like us who may have watched this unknowingly that we do this that yeah. we talk about it at all really yeah, exactly um all right i think we got the disclaimer out of the way let's go ahead yeah, and that's- <laughs> drop the spoiler warning i guess and then we'll, and then we'll talk about uh, this movie sure let's some, drop a spoiler movie. warning yeah. <laughs> spoiler warning <laughs> uh. 
It's it's like we've never done a show before. Like we don't know what to do. We don't. Like, yeah. How like, do we do? This? We're trying to take this, <laughs> give this the the like the the seriousness that the topic deserves. But yeah. also, comedy is a, uh, a coping mechanism for yes. like all of us. Yes. So uh, self preservation. We're going to be really trying <laughs> to toe the line here, but man, we our, our discomfort should be noted because it's. Uh, it's isn't it's not easy for us to talk about some of this shit no with the sincerity that it really deserves um, um yeah yeah so i've got a plot typed up i'll i'll try and make this uh brief um uh so for context sake uh, this movie is a la- it, it's a loose adaptation of the 1785 novel uh which was first published in 1904 titled the 120 days of sodom it was written by the marquis de sod um, the story was updated um, to take place during the World War II era. Uh, the film is also separated into four parts with titles inspired by Dante, Dante's Divine Comedy, which is an Italian narrative poem from 1320 that depicts the soul's journey towards God divided into three parts titled Hell, Purgatory, and Paradise. Uh, the first segment of this film is titled Anti-Inferno, which means Hell's Vestibule. Uh, in 1944, the Republic of Salo, the fascist occupied portion of Italy, um, the Duke, the Bishop, the Magistrate, and the President all marry each other's daughters. They roll it when they arrive to the mansion. Their, da- their daughters must be naked at all times. They also recruit four teenage boys as guards and four teenage boys as soldiers. They also end up kidnapping nine girls and nine boys uh, who are handpicked Everybody goes to the palace. Uh, The second segment is titled The Circle of Manias. Um, Accompanying these four libertines at the palace, there are four middle-aged prostitutes who tell stories each morning of their prostitution um, to excite the men so that they can then exploit their victims. Um, Over the course of several days, the actions become more and more depraved. Um, There's a weird wedding ceremony uh there's like a mannequin masturbation scene um they make the kids act like dogs um there's sexual degradation and uh they murder at least one kid in this scene um the next have one of them piss in their mouths i mean yeah yeah, there's uh, yeah there's other stuff i'm i'm glossing uh, uh, yeah i know i'm just uh fucking the next title, yeah. the next the next chapter, if you will, is titled The Circle of Shit. Um, so, Senora Maggi, which is one of the prostitutes. That is not a metaphor. Yeah, it's not. Uh, she's, uh, she's, one, she's one of the prostitutes that tells stories. Uh, she tells a story about coprophilia, which is the sexual arous- arousal and pleasure of fecal matter. Um, Magi, Magi, probably, um, also explains uh, how she kills her mother over dispute regarding her prostitution, causing one of the other girls to begin crying, recalling her own mother's death. Um, the Duke becomes aroused by this, and uh, uh, he eventually just forces the girl to eat his shit. Um, later on, everybody is presented with a huge meal of human feces. Uh, everybody eats it. And then they have a weird competition to find out who has the best butt. Um, the final uh, chapter of this fucked up movie is called Circle of Blood. Uh, there, there's a black mass wedding uh, between the four uh, male libertines and the four soldiers. The men are dressed in drag. Um, after the wedding, uh, the bishop consummates his marriage, and then he goes around to check on all of his captives. He finds them doing stuff they shouldn't be doing, and they each begin to systematically betray each other. Um, after this, uh, the remaining victims are called out, and they determine who is to be punished. Uh, those who betrayed their friends are spared, while the others are given a blue ribbon and promised uh, a very painful death. The traitors are then taken outside. They're tortured, raped, murdered. Uh, they're branded, scalped, hung. They have their tongues cut off, their eyes poked out. Horrible, horrible stuff. And each one of the four libertines uh, take turns um, watching uh, from the second story window uh, through some binoculars. They're just voyeurs. They like take turn uh, watching all this shit. Uh, the pianist, who's been 
playing piano this whole time, eventually looks out the window and uh, realizes what she's been a part of, and she decides to commit suicide. She jumps out the window to her death. The final shot of the movie is of two sh- two soldiers who participated in these atrocities. They're dancing a simple waltz with one another. One asks the other of the harem's name, to which the other replies, the aristocrats. Roll credits. Wait, hold up. Yes. I did not see anything about the aristocrats. Yeah, that's what I read. I don't remember because I didn't want to rewatch any of it. To be honest, because at the at the end of the yeah. movie, like the one the, the edition I saw ended with them waltzing, and one of them just being like, "Oh, you know what's oh, really? you know where what what's your girlfriend's name?" He's like, "Oh, yeah, my name's Marguerite," that's how ours and then it. that's it. And is it's that like a, this he very said, "What's your girlfriend's name?" Thing. Yeah, that's right. I remember Maybe that's the so. aristocrats thing is like the aristocrats. I don't know if you know about the joke, the aristocrats. Do you? I must not. No. So the aristocrats is like a really it's a joke format that's widely circulated and comedy circles or whatever and basically it's a, a kind of a personal challenge to crack up your comedian friends or whatever by saying the most fucked up version of the same joke that you can and the joke is mm. about a family of traveling circus performers who do really depraved things to and with each other for money and they describe them in great detail and it's really fucking gross and everybody's like oh, oh god and then at the end they say and what do you call it we call it the aristocrats. So I feel like somebody tacked that on at the end as a joke. Yeah, because I specifically <laughs> remember the last line being like, what's your girlfriend's name? Yeah, me too. Really? I don't remember that. I just I feel like when I read that, I was like, I oh, he's talking about the libertines. He's just, you know, instead yeah. of saying libertines, they ch- I mean, it's, a, it's it's yeah, it, it makes sense kind of in its own way, but it's yeah. not, I don't think that's actually in the movie. I think somebody's fucking with us that's fine also never watch it and don't find out because it doesn't (laughs) fucking matter that really really doesn't doesn't. matter man fuck this movie honestly so like even before (laughs) we found out all like the atrocious stuff about the director and the context of the movie and like whether or not some of these kids might have allegedly been underage I was, I was already like i already arrived at like my conclusion of fuck this movie like there's There are some themes here explored in very gruesome ways that are completely lacking any, like even the slightest shred of subtlety. Like the, the points this dude is making is like fascism, bad, mindless consumerism, bad, like rape and torture of minors, bad, the rape of my country, bad murder bad like duh like all these things are just like very like service level obvious shit and the way he chooses uh, to to like convey these themes to you are very like surface level bullshit ways like like uh you know people consuming junk food junk food is basically shit how can i convey that to you in my movie okay i'll have them eat literal shit i am a, a literary genius all of a sudden like I don't know. Like this movie is the highest level of fart sniffy bullshit I think I've ever seen. The movie opens uh, with a bibliography. Like if you want to get my I movie, you got to read like 20 novels or else you're in dumbass. Like fuck Dude, this that, Yeah, that's insane. But also like the, the whole thing is like to me like, yeah, there's some there like if I was kind of, I was in the same boat as you did. As soon as I kind of finished this movie, I was like, what did I just fucking watch? There was no real point to that. Like, I, like the thing is, I can point out a few things in this movie that in other movies would qualify as a, you know, a cogent point or at least at least, you know, an attempt at some sort of metaphor like you described. But they're either like deeply surface level or completely and utterly obfuscated by the like glut of total fucking depraved bullshit that they put on screen. Like this movie's drowned by its own toxicity. It it, it actually might have stood a chance of doing what it's trying to do if it had pulled back more, but it doesn't. And instead leans as hard on the fucking throttle as it can and makes it as gross and hard to like, it, it's just like how much shit do you actually have to wade through in order to find that kernel of sa- sa- salience? You know, I don't think that there's enough, of it in here. I don't think there's anything near enough uh, in here to make it worth watching. And that like the reviews I've seen on like Amazon and shit like that tend to reflect that most people say this movie is not worth the squeeze. And those are people that 
I assume don't even know the background of the director, which adds an extra layer of fucked up to this movie that pushed it over way over the edge for me. Well, yeah. And to Randy mentioned it before, and I want to kind of tackle it in a similar way of where, you know, it's impossible once you know to not have it color the film in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Like once you kind of or like, you know, what's alleged of the director and and some things that he was arrested for and things like that, because, you know, I, I try to say, well, I hope, you know, Criterion and these countries and stuff did their due diligence. However, like I it, for some reason, as we were just kind of going through some things, a thought popped into my mind. Last, uh, what is it? The Last Tango in Paris, I believe, is one of those films that was filmed. Um, it's It's got a kind of an infamous sexual rape-esque scene where the girl at the time was 19 and she came out later and said that, you know, that actually wasn't consensual. There wasn't an actual rape oh involved God. or whatever, but, you know, that she was very young and impressionable and felt violated from, you know, the overall actor and director involved in that film. And so, you know, these things happen in the basic of senses, you know, like... So that what kind of troubled me or the theme of this film and you know forgive me I've been watching a lot of Mindhunter recently I'm no psychologist <laughs> by forgiven. any means but one okay, of the Tish, themes lay it on me well one of the themes um <laughs> Um, was kind of the escalation of a sexual depravity from an idea of like going from control to humiliation to violence, where it's almost this. Um, in watching Mindhunter, one of the the people that they interview, which is a real killer, and his his interviews, I think you can actually find on YouTube. They're very interesting. Ed Kemper, where he talks about it in a very self aware, matter of fact way of, you know. I'm aware that this is in me and that this is not normal, but it's an impulse and it starts through fantasies and it builds and it escalates and it becomes an impulse that you can't really control. And so when I see the, you know, the allegations and the, the arrest and charges against this director with minors, you can't help but think like in the worst cases, you know, this is a man who's using his position as an artist and as an older man at this time. And he was at least, I believe, in his mid 30s to 40s when he made this film, um, hiring models, not actors to do these scenes. Even when we were watching it, I said to Bob, I can't imagine what it was like filming this this movie yeah he was in his Um, early 50s yeah everyone's naked all the time um but the idea of you know this he's able to create his own fantasy not only create like create it in a real sense not through drawings or any i mean he is putting people in these positions while he is also in a position of control, you know, he is their boss. He has hired them. He is way older than them. He is influential. He is, you know, an established director. And so, you know, I can't help but see this almost as a mirror. The criticisms that he is highlighting on these disgusting men who are imposing, I can't help but see this man in that role almost as a self as almost like as an ed kemper of like i am aware i can't control it or whatever and yet it's almost this like self hating yet self-fulfilling peace that encompasses everything that is or could potentially be wrong with this man i want that's a fascinating point go ahead i wanted to play devil's advocate here i agree with you but I do want to throw this out there. Um, so this movie was based on a book with the mm-hmm. same name that was written by the Marquis de Sade, um, who was a French nobleman, a revolutionary, a politician, philosopher. He wrote a whole bunch of stuff. He was eventually arrested. Um, he also sort of had this like uh, libertine sexuality that who is like known for, um, I believe like the term sodomy was like first used in his writings. Um, anyway, he, he was in jail when he started writing 120 days of Sodom and, um, he, he never finished it. He finished the first chapter and then he did like a rough outline of all the other chapters. 
Um, it was published much later after, after he died. Um, you can get your hands on it if you want to read it. And apparently, uh, Pasolini did, and that's what he decided to base his movie on. So in a way, he's almost like shielded by like point, pointing his finger at like, well, you know, I am not sexually corrupted or depraved in any way, but I am a, I am a scholar. I read literature i'm educated and i am aware of this marquis de sade and i was moved by his piece and i thought it spoke to uh my own life and my own experience dealing with like fascist italy um and like nazism like you know nazis taking over sallow and like he sort of updated it dusted it off or whatever and like i don't know he's it feels like he's almost shielding himself by by basing this movie on a book and i feel like a lot of people who watched this movie, a lot of scholars, a lot of smart people, smarter people than me, for sure, think that same way. Like, well, there's levels of literature at play here, so, like, he can't be depraved because he's intelligent. <laughs> so See, that's I want to play devil's advocate to that because okay. I okay. cannot help... The more we bring up, I can't help but see this as a self-deprecating mirror almost of this man's subconscious because the the aristocrats or whatever... They do the same shit. Mm, They're sitting yeah. around quoting, "Oh, that's they not do, Baudelaire. Yeah. That's do. uh, you know, or you know, whatever. Yeah. That's this." They're sitting around qu- quoting poetry and acting like their intellect matters. Their their yeah, interest yeah. in poetry and they're making and terrible who scholar jokes. said what? Yeah. yeah. And so that's the same. Yeah, they quote. Thing. No, no, yeah, they quote. The you same, guys, you guys the are person. saying the same thing. We are. No, what's yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the this is the thing. Like people point at this movie and they're like, "Oh, but this has rich subtext and it has a lot to say about you know fascist Italy." A man who lived through it wrote this, like made this movie, and it it's, comes from literature and all, all those things can be true. And at the same time, he can be living out a fantasy. Yeah, like yeah. like Ed Kemper, maybe maybe not. I don't know, but like serial killers like mm, deadly people who are have have this like sort of thing built into their brains they sometimes cope with it by making art and usually that's a safe outlet for them to do that you want to write something write something you want to draw something draw something but these are actual human lives that they he chose to be in as part of this it's hard knowing his fucking entire like like his rep sheet his rap sheet to not put two and two together and think, okay, well, yeah, he's using these things to make a, an artistic comment, but two things can be true at the same time. The other thing that's true is that he's fucking into this. He, he's getting his rocks off. He's using this not like, not exact as like kind of a perfect cover for, you know, the things that he is known to be interested in, which are depraved, depraved, horrible things. And a lot of like, as we know. So I don't know, like both of these things are true at the same time. And I just don't find that to be a very compelling argument that like, ah, it's art though. Like you have to separate from the artist. No, especially not when he's using art as a cudgel with which to enact his fucking sick fantasies on potentially children and certainly younger influential or influenceable young people who most of which did not have an acting career after this, many of which had their actual names like used as their character names. So their faces and names are shown on camera being besmirched, basically. Like that's not nothing. That is a like like the shit that we give Weinstein, like like quadruple that shit down onto this motherfucker. And you've got yourself an argument, I think. Like I just don't I don't think it's responsible to separate my personally, I just don't think it's responsible to separate the art from the artist on this. And I don't think it's like I, I just they're so intertwined you could people and people do make an argument for the art but completely gloss over the shit that may, that that art is actually doing that that shit is actually done for the real like one of if not the only true reason for making this was to satisfy an itch that he had and i don't think it was an artistic itch i think the art came after the impulse and i think this movie is the product of the impulse not the art and I yeah. think this movie passes way better. I think this movie has way more in common with a pedophilic fantasy than it does with high art. I'm sorry. I don't care about the blocking. I don't care about where they like the fucking script. I don't really care about those things because I know enough about this guy to see through. I think 
what he's actually fucking doing by making this and it's getting his fucking rocks off i do i do want to be clear that we're not trying to belittle anything that harvey weinstein did but they both (laughs) both these people like oh no no i'm sorry their influence to no yeah but like to their own ends yeah like just Just as a as a modern day comparison sure yeah you've got this guy who is now known like through fucking forensic evidence of being an uber creep who used his position as an uh, a member of the artistic community and a powerful figure to manipulate people. And, you know, even if these people are not, are, are all of age, even if all of them are of age, that's power dynamic still exists, you yeah. know? And yeah. there's no reason for me to think that even if these kids are all 18, that they all, that they all walked away from this as whole people that were totally fine with what happened. I to Yeah. That's based, fair enough. Yeah. Based on shit that I have read, it does seem as though all accounts of these actors on set were like, you know, when we weren't filming these horrendous things, it was actually very jovial, very playful. They were playing football with each other and stuff. So, like, it seems like the the atmosphere on set was light and enjoyable. However, if any of them are underage, that really doesn't matter. You know, so it's it, yeah. that question mark just and lingers. Also, and also, like... That's in that's on set. Like there's horrible things that can happen on set and do in this yeah, movie certainly, yeah. but the, in in most productions that aren't this pointedly intentionally depraved, the, the really horrible shit happens behind closed doors. And we have no reason to think that didn't happen as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Yeah. I guess I mean I guess the one thing too is like if I was going to make a film, you know, you know, I'm, and I'm trying to like rack my creative brain of like, what are these plot points going to be? Mm. You know, I just, I don't think I'm going to have anybody eating shit. <laughs> like I'm not, you know, I just, and not, you know, and he has a little bit of an excuse to say like, you know, it, this comes from a book or, you know, but I mean, and I'm not saying that, you know, any movie that's got rape in it, you know, the director is a rapist or the writer is a rapist. That's not what I'm trying to say. But this whole film, it it lacks uh, what both of Randy and Bob are saying. Before I knew anything separated from this, I was like, you know, there's not much of a story here. And one thing that kind of stuck out yes. to me <laughs> is, you know, the thing is, is you're following these kids in this terrible situation and yet what out of the 16 esque of them 18 you know people kill themselves and stuff like that to get away from this but let's say 16 for a baseline of the 16 characters there's one person who i feel like i know any details about like um the girl whose mom kills herself, who actually cries and, you know, yeah. is, is sorrowful is and stuff like that. What, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So if the whole idea is, you know what, we need to show how terrible these people are and how they really, you know, ruin the country for us and they take what they want and they do these things. Well, don't you think we should sympathize then with the young people you know they should be the one who our heart really like wrenches mm-hmm. for and yet they're they're treated as just like cattle almost they're they're intensely they're, passive yeah they're passive they're almost nameless they're indistinct in their personality some are and, complacent like they yeah just go and, along and so, so one of the kids one of the kids one of the boys becomes a guard by the end of the movie yeah and so that idea of yeah you know or really sticking it to the upper class or the fascist who really brought us down it's like mm-hmm. i don't i don't see that necessarily i mean i see it in the general actions but in the narrative sense this film as a piece of art is very weak because um you know a couple people kill themselves to escape the idea but i don't know anything about them either you know they're just nameless just actionless kind of characters that just kind of exist for this 
fantasy and so i don't really think so if i if you want to just critique the art and separate it well i think that's a very weak stance because if the whole idea is about critique is about you know really giving it to the man or really you know showing the evils of fascism and stuff like that well then we should be able to follow and identify and sympathize with the victims and that movie makes this essentially impossible I think that like, yeah, I mean, to, to your point, yeah, I think so. But I can hear in my mind the counter argument. So here's my devil's advocate moment. My devil's advocate moment is somebody's going to be like, well, yeah, like I said earlier that it makes you feel complicit in something. I think that is an intentional choice that's being made. Or I think that's, I think that that people will argue that that is to the movie's benefit because you're supposed to feel like, oh no, my passivity of looking at this is part of the problem. And as a broader conversation about fascism, sure. But that's completely fucking obfuscated. And again, to your point, like this movie, as far as characters go, has basically no plot. There's basically no character development. There's just people doing things. And it doesn't seem it there's no there's no arc here. It starts where it ends basically like i don't see this and here's the thing is like talking about the fascism stuff or whatever like i just i just just for my own state of mind i decided okay i'm gonna list every movie i can think of with that are could be qualified as anti-fascist or a movie about systemic abuse of power and i came up with a list of almost 35 mostly off the top of my head starship troopers metropolis they live american history x great dictator and glorious bastards pan's labyrinth fever vendetta minority report schindler's list green room snowpiercer there's so many there's so many one over the cuckoo's nest is about abuse of power doubt is about abuse of power spotlight is about abuse of power and none of them None of them required the fucking depths that this movie had to go to. All of them tackled the same issue without making like the viewer feel complicit in anything. And you know, as far as I know, none of them were also accompanied by the guilt of knowing that the by, by, by watching this, you're basically watching the pornography of the director and it's based around this horrible, horrible things. I think it's terrible. And then like looking at that list, I was thinking about um you youtuber lindsay ellis made a video about you know i uh um uh like nazism in film and how like okay you look at the producers and you know that's a movie that makes light of nazism you know that's a movie that people were upset with mel brooks about when he first released it but nobody fucking no like the thing is like no fucking uh uh actual nazi neo-nazi any of that shit sing springtime for hitler as a rallying cry but you look at a movie like american history x and they see ed norton looking fucking badass and swole as fuck and they look at that movie as a rallying point if you pretend you're to be something so hard that you are identifiable to the people you're trying to critique it stops being a critique really <laughs> like that's the thing is like i feel like any pedophile sad- sadistic pedophile that wanted to watch illegal pornography towards that end could get their rocks off with this movie and that makes me feel fucking shitty i don't want any part of it i agree randy that's all but to to, to your point talking about how like uh, the passivity of some of these these characters and how that is definitely a critique of people who are just like uh, passively watching like fascists roll into sallow or italy the country or you know europe in or general Florida. and just or <laughs> just agreeing to roll with it um i definitely think that that's a theme in this movie um i also found a point here that like i guess there was no background given uh to the victims in this movie intentionally to sort of uh demonstrate that the physical body is just a commodity it's not it's not a person it's just a thing to do what you want with it you know which i guess goes it like feeds into the consumerism and fascism points but does it make it a good movie? No. I'll tell you how bad this movie was at a, at identifying characters. When Bob was reading his plop synopsis over here, and he was talking about that there were four different women who ran the orgy room and told stories, I had no idea. I thought that that was one person. Legitimately. I had oh, really? no idea that there were four distinct people Dude, running that segment. I legit I didn't know. did not in that same vein, I didn't realize for the entire movie that the presidents and the dukes and all their daughters were the went nude women serving them. I didn't I had no either. fucking idea of that either. I didn't either. 
on a craft level kind of fucking defeats the, the point <laughs> yeah. that you're making if you can't actually like put the pieces in play like yeah maybe the uh the subs on this criterion know, disc are just bullshit i don't know and the Whoa, thing is like subs, even if all huh, of this Bob? shit was played perfectly what? even if wow. all the sh- wow <laughs> Even if all this shit was played perfectly, like the artistry was impeccable, the statement was incredible, all that stuff, none of it kind of removes the real life sh- situation that's behind it that really makes it, for me, impenetrably disgusting. And I just don't really want to engage with the ideas of this movie because yeah, other movies same. do it better. And there's no, there's no, the juice not being worth the squeeze is not a big enough statement. Yeah, that, nothing worthwhile in this movie to me. I think you nailed it, Randy. There are movies, we watch movies that show, you know, depraved things, people being killed and tortured and things like that. And it's not always in a, a like depraved sense, I guess. But the it's thing, not always in good taste either. Yeah, it's not. But the thing is, is like, so it's not just, you know, this, like I said before, it's not anyone who's made a film that's got rape and is a, is a rapist. It's not that. No. It's just, if you you want to critique this film uh, even alone separating these troubling things surrounding it i just don't think it's that like it's not a masterpiece it's it's kind of boring um from a narrative sense it's completely lacking from there's not a whole lot of change in scenery like you said it things just happen and the things that happen are just they're not developed they they don't really kind of evolve except in their depravity but it's just like hey i'm feeling horny come piss on my face yeah. <laughs> period to the end of the sentence you know and the only, if i could say the only interesting things that i found in the ways of character development or ideas of theme was the one scene where everyone starts to kind of portray each other. And the one thing I found interesting about that scene from an artistic standpoint is when they get to the final person, actually not even just the final person, a couple people. One thing I found interesting was the idea of despite this sexual trauma that people are still seeking out their own healthy sexual identities that they complicitly comply in to where the guy in the end, he is having sex with the maid or whatever. Um, That's who he's attracted to. That's who he actually wants to have sex with. The girls are having sex together. Um, I found that an interesting potentially aspect and the other one was the pianist killing herself the idea of kind of keeping your head low um or i don't know if it's like i don't know what i'm getting into or i was just here to play piano or like you know i didn't actually rape anyone but her you know kind of choosing that path that had some interesting elements to it as far as a narrative sense other than that i just don't think there's a lot of meat on this bone I like the and score. I, Ennio Morricone's score was ah, good. Yeah. That is all. I did not even fucking notice the music. Not really? at all. Well, it's no. good. I, I did just, it at the like, beginning yeah. because that's before anything happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the whole opening like, credits. And you know, like I want to also like point out that we're not, you know, like we're not spring chickens here. We're not fucking, you know, we're, we're not <laughs> We've, we, we, we've seen while. some shit. We've yeah. watched. Fucking, yeah, we've been doing this shit. We've watched yeah. a Serbian film. We've watched Eden Lake last week. Yeah, like we've watched a weeks. lot of New French <laughs> Extremity. I feel relative. I feel so much more confident that those movies were made by people, you know, or at least m- were made not with child actors in compromising positions. I can't say that about this movie. I know. I've, I have pretty good confidence that. The people who make them may be kind of fucked up, but as far as I know, aren't so fucked up as to do the things this man was convicted of doing. So it, it just it enters a whole new realm there. Like the artistry at that point really doesn't matter. And it, it to me, like I think that it's kind of a shame that I've in my research after the fact, I had to look so hard. We all had to look so hard to find anybody even talking about this 
this stuff that like really does, at least for me, and I got to think for other people, just kind of like give up the ghost on the whole thing. Yeah. Like, and honestly, I don't, to be honest with everyone, like that's one of the reasons why we all felt compelled to actually do this episode about yeah, this film. True. It had been discussed like, hey, let's switch it or whatever. But we we're like, why don't people know about this? <laughs> you know, why yeah. isn't this on the YouTube where you're trying to research Silo? Why isn't this in the blogs? Why isn't this in the, you know, the film critics and stuff like that? It's just, it's, it's really not prevalent in the discussion of this film, but it seems so relevant when you get the whole picture of who this director was. And after watching this movie, it's, I don't know how you don't put those fucking pieces together and just see, like, I don't, I don't care how good of an artist you are. You don't get to transgress on people, especially children and not get, not get at least that, that shit talked about. I mean, there's conversations about other people. uh, um, Fucking what's his name? We were talking about on the Slack. Um, uh, Rosemary's Baby. What's that fucker's oh, name? Oh, Polanski. Polanski. I didn't know shit about Polanski's allegations or that he was still alive. I didn't know any of that. But, you know, that's like that kind of changes the game for people. I think that some of that stuff should be better known. But it seems like people generally, it's not like it's not a secret for Polanski. This feels like I had to sift through more shit than the movie itself in order to get to the kernel of truth that is yeah. this man fucking has had sex with minors as a uh, full grown adult. I'll give another shout out to our buddy uh, Bean Dirt. He's got a YouTube channel. He he actually chimed in on our Slack too. He's like, hey, I'm literally in the middle of making a video about this movie, like doing research for my video and had no idea when we started talking about yeah. it on the Slack. So yeah, it definitely seems to have flown under the radar. Um, so, you know, if you did know about and it, can, then then this is like obviously probably boring for you. But if you didn't, hopefully this has been enlightening enlightening somewhat. You know, if you want to watch the movie that's on you, we don't recommend it. Um, is there anything else you guys want to touch on? It's time to land the plane, but if there's any final final words, go ahead and squeeze I them in. I think it's probably, and we haven't discussed this, so you can like tell me if this is possible. But like as far as, you know... It, it, if possible, I'd like to put our sources in the in the show notes because, yeah, we're also not researchers, and the possibility that we're wrong about this exists. But True. I don't yeah. think so. Allegedly. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, that's it's very much a throwing the allegedly disclaimer on this thing. I mean, for our own benefit. At the end of the day, we're all reading the same internet. We're all watching the same bonus features. Mm-hmm. We're watching the same interviews. Uh, nobody was there on set, you know, nobody like knows nobody on this podcast anyway, like knows the actors yeah. personally, you know? Uh, so at the end of the day, yes, we might be incorrect about the ages of the people in this movie. Allegedly, like we're, like we're just saying, this is a disclaimer. However, we do know the director had relations with underage people. That is a fact undebatable. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, we can in- include our sources in the show notes. If you guys want to s- send anything to me that you read or watched or whatever, I'll definitely include those in the show notes. No problem. Great. I just um, want to, Good point. Good point. Yeah. So we're again, this is a different sh- episode for us. We've never done anything quite like this before. We're just going to not rate this movie. Um, this is going unrated. It seems totally unnecessary to rate this movie out of five. Uh, it's a zero. Yeah. We're going to skip right over that. Way to go, Kelvin. No, shout outs to Kelvin. Yeah. He didn't know. Nobody knew. Nobody yeah. knows. Now All the love know. in the world to Kelvin. Make that yeah, very, we, very we clear. Love Kelvin, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, that's gonna do our our review on Sallow. Let's uh we are gonna do our Rotten Tomatoes segment. Let's go ahead and jump into that. Certified. 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 All right, guys. So this is our Rotten Tomatoes segment in which I'm going to have these gentlemen guess within the best of their abilities what the critics and user score are for Solo on RottenTomatoes.com. These are the aggregate scores. We'll start with the critics, as we usually do. Um, man, I, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a little ghoulish, and I'm sorry, but it's just... This is interesting to talk about. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead and get into it. And I'm going to give Rob the floor for the first pick. There are 39 critic reviews. Where do you think it falls on the spectrum? I think this is mostly a critical darling. I so I've got the Criterion disc here, and I chose not to read the back of the box because it literally calls this a masterpiece. 
And I think that's absolutely insane. It's a <laughs> masterpiece of shit. It is released by Criterion, Bob. Um, See, that's why you shouldn't buy physical undebatable. media. That's <laughs> not why. That's not why. So, yeah, I think this is going to be high. Michael Bay has a Criterion movie. <laughs> It's true. The Rock, right? He directed The Rock. The Rock. Dude, um, the Rock's sweet, though. The Rock is sweet. Um, it's I better think than this, this movie. I think this is going to be <laughs> high. I'm going to give this like an... Man, I'm going to give it like an 80. 80. Okay. Justin, where are you at with it? I'm going to be inappropriate and say 69, please. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, boy. Congratulations, Justin. It's exactly 69. <laughs> Are you serious? Is I'm serious. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> this feels like it a practical joke. It was bad enough joke. without you guessing. <laughs> it's like and Rotten Tomatoes it. knew we were doing this and played a joke. I don't <laughs> even want to celebrate that with the hell you. Yeah, it's we're a ve- not eating this. It's a very I, legal, I usually do. It's a legal consensual 69. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so, yeah, let's go to the so yeah congrats i guess kind of <laughs> damn juice why See, don't yeah, you that's kick so us off unfortunate for th- though that it's so that's so but we'll get there that's that's why honestly we that's about, lower than i thought it would be we like ta- yeah we yeah, talked yeah. about whether we should do this segment or not at all and i was like i want to know uh, for the same reason hey let's cover this people aren't talking about this we need to mm-hmm. talk about it and i want to know and that's so high okay let's do the users um Fuck. Yeah, it's just over uh, 10,000, by the way. Dang. Oh, um, right. fuck. I'm going to lose all faith in humanity and say 75. <laughs> 75. Well, it's okay, just people fuck. don't know. Be, you know, it'd be, it's. Uh, well, okay. Um, but don't, still. Let's, but, no, okay, don't but discount still. the scores of pedophiles yeah. that exist. Yeah, um, exactly. There you go. I'm. Or sadists. Bob? I desperately try to remain an optimist. Um. <laughs> Fool. It's a tough gig. Said, dude, dude, what was your number? I don't even remember. 75. 75. Okay. That's uh, how I balance Bob out. I'm going to go down. Yeah. I'm the negative down, Nancy. Down, the down. cards are stacked against me. <laughs> I'm going to go with a, uh, just a 70. I'll take a 70. 70. Okay. Well, I'm happy to report it is a 63% so okay. lower than what All you right. guys said. And still not as low as I feel it should be. But yeah. It's uh, at least, at least it's it's lower than What's the, the critics. What's the consensus, Randy? So, the critics' consensus reads as follows: Solo or the 120 Days of Sodom will strike some viewers as irredeemably depraved, but its unflinching view of human cruelty makes it impossible to ignore. I'll tell you, I could have easily ignored this movie for the rest of my life. <laughs> Probably, I had no intention of watching this before it was picked, but honor bound as I was, I watched it. Yeah, and boy, do do I wish I didn't. Another thing I thought was worth maybe talking about, we just didn't, you know, I'm surprised we talked about it as long as we did, was Me the too, idea man. of the systematic abuse where the yeah. women who ran the you know orgy room who were telling their stories mm-hmm. were telling them mm-hmm. about like one was like, I was seven years old and she's like delighting in it almost now and putting these like kids through the same thing. And that mm-hmm. was... I don't know. Tough. <laughs> yeah. That I mean that was true, I guess. That but see that it, it still brings me back to the idea of like I feel like this man is almost doing a reflection, you know. Mm. Was he mm-hmm. in the same place? Was he abused, you know, was as a minor? We don't know, but like I couldn't help but put him in that spot almost. I feel like this damn carne asada feller like gives him this like blanket of <laughs> Of like he's sh- like a shield. He provides a shield because like all that shit is straight from the book 120 Days of uh, Sodom. Yeah, yeah. So he could just be like, "What? It's not from my mind. It's from this other dude's mind." But like also he could be like, "Fuck yeah, I'm like really enjoying this oh, in a weird yeah. sexual level." It's like, and then people will be like, "Yeah, he's smart. He read a book. What? He's he not. What? He's not perfect. He read a book. I don't know. Yeah, man, I've read a book." <laughs> don't need to do this about it yeah are You're, we uh did you have a consensus or oh, anything or did you want to read a bad review randy or anything oh yeah, yeah the bad let's, review, randy. let's read let's read some yeah sure we got time solo read is three. forceful <laughs> i'm gonna read so many solo i'm only gonna read bad ones as usual but pointedly this time solo is forceful only in making the viewer want to turn away not funny accurate though um it's dude, very there was this one is, when they were eating the doo-doo like as a squad 
I, I had a legit gag. I legit, As a squad. <laughs> yeah, I gagged. I audibly, like, I was you like, mean I'm as a okay, squat? I'm okay. Like, and through everything else, I was like, oh, I'm okay. But through that, I was like, Dude, oh, shit. We Honestly, like, that is the part that bothered me the squat. least is all that shit. Really? I mean, just, yeah, I think because there was, was not like there was no actual fondling like, going on. Yeah. There was no actual like like Ooh. I don't know about penetration because we the, fortunately didn't see that much. The doo doo kiss on the forehead got me hard. Oh that, yeah, that anything was involving the doo doo, I was like, Ugh. dude, that to me just <laughs> hit hit me like even thinking that, that hit me like somebody some like some kid at fucking sitting behind the counter at Hot mm. Topic bored dude. would be reading on a slash fiction website. That's horse shit, and it does not rank for me like we make yeah. jokes like more ridiculously gross than that i mean you're a, as a, and but they're jokes and we don't depict them with children so. this is this is like the the carne asada was like the proto edgelord and then the fucking pasolini was like director edge edgelord in 1975 you're right man it's like it's all proto edgelord bullshit like you'd read this you'd read this on a subreddit nowadays and like dude yeah you know. absolutely you can yeah the internet exists now so this shit's commonplace amongst other similarly disgusting people anyway but read, um read another yeah. one. What, what else you got anyway it's uh it's very hard to sit through and offers no insight whatsoever into power politics history or sexuality nasty stuff yeah i mean yeah, yeah, that's true yeah. i i lean more towards agreeing with that than anything else disgusting terrible awful no good <laughs> says one person very bad um, day yeah yeah exactly the messaging here feels blunt and unsophisticated to modern eyes. Boy, it that's does. a generous it does. but accurate statement. It makes its point about fascism and Pasolini's artistic sense is obvious in every frame, but the film becomes an endurance contest to see if you can make it to the bitter end without vomiting. Yeah, whatever. Yep. I don't know. Bitter end. Pun intended. Uh, solo this is this is from a user i just want to read this one Ma solo masquerades as some sort of political allegory but the supposed subtext subtext is just a tenuous excuse for covering a whole spectrum of perversity it has no purpose apart from from to shock and disgust yeah i'll also give that one too, a ding a ling i want to like make the statement too this is not us clutching pearls or anything this is right. not, i don't want some bullshit little I mean, you know, say what you know, want, but I don't, that's Lord, not what it is. Yeah, coming in, be like, oh, you guys don't can't do handle it. it. It's like, just I juvenile. Can fucking like, handle it, bitch. <laughs> like, it's not. I watched that. it. It's just not good. It's really no. not that good. It's not good, and with everything else around it, it's offensive for that reason. Yeah, you want it to be good because it makes you special. You right. Think, well, yeah. Uh, okay. remember, all right. All right. This all reminds right. me. You know. <laughs> okay, okay. I, this, are you this out there, me. son? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all, right, all right. All right. All right. This <laughs> reminds me of a time when a friend of ours, a friend of our mutual friend, uh, you you poured us each. You. This is after your trip to to Italy, actually. Um, oh yeah, Germany, I know. You, yes. you poured. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You poured Continue. us each a shot of absinthe yeah. with the requisite sugar, and our friend was like, "Oh, I'd love to try it or whatever," and. He eventually went to the bathroom for a second before the shots were dispersed and we replaced his sugar with a bunch of salt. <laughs> and so Dude, he I took the shot and then took the fucking salt as well with his shot of absinthe. And by the way, absinthe is disgusting. And he just like stone faced it as like, and we're like, yeah, man, it's, like, it's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty good. good. No, it's not. We know that it's not. <laughs> Stop fucking around. I forgot about that. Damn, that's you're not a deep impressing pool. anyone. But like, yeah, it's like, damn, that's a deep uh, pool. The I real just, that's that shit has stuck with me, and that's what this feels like. It's like just desperately attempting to. It's good. I know it's oh, good. De yeah, desperately it's attempting good. to 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 give yourself the clout, the imagined clout <laughs> of being the guy who can handle absinthe <laughs> best salt. or. Can watch Solo and laugh. Oh boy, are you Man. so so? Cool. You know, you know the crazy thing is, Justin and I were just talking about this. We brought back a couple bottles of absinthe. Apparently, Justin still has a bottle. Still have one. This was before you could buy absinthe in the states. Before yeah, it was legalized. It was We'd illegal. Brought, we smuggled, smuggled it in, and none of it's like absinthe the way that you imagine with wormwood. With the wormwood. Yes, yeah, 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 with wormwood and shit. No, it's but. Yeah, still we we bought it in Germany. Damn, that's it, wild. A thing that sh it was illegal. Yeah, it definitely yeah. was illegal. Yeah, you were not allowed to. Have you can buy it at fucking Total Wine now. Yeah, yeah, you can. 
Uh, wow. All right. Uh, thanks, Randy, for the Rotten Maters segment. We are gonna we're gonna oh, skip yeah. trivia. We're gonna skip Cooter of the Week because it's too obvious. I think that one's pretty fucking obvious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're just we're gonna get right down to what we've been watching this week. Hey gang, what you been watching? All righty then, Randy. What you been watching, man? Oh boy. Um. <laughs> So hey, I, I wish I hadn't like blown my like entire load. I had, like, tw- yeah. I had like 12 things last week because it was backed up for several weeks. And now I have a really short I list. So. It was, um, I did. I don't, I think that I talked about finishing my best friend's exorcism, the book, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you did. did. I know yeah. I talked about the book, but I talked about finishing it. Right. Yeah. And it was all right. You know, it was pretty, pretty okay. Um, I think I'm interested to see what they do with a, a film adaptation, but it was very, you know, it was po- it was a popcorn book if you can understand my meaning. Okay. Um, but I also after that was done, in order to continue with my attempt to you know be more literate this year and read a book so I can be like my hero Pasolini, um, <laughs> I started reading Devil House by John Darnielle, which just came out. And John Darnielle, for those who don't know, is the lead singer of the Mountain Goats and one of my personal favorite musicians. He's written two other novels before this. I've read one of them. I did not read the, the second novel yet, although I do own it. But I started reading this one, and it is a fucking good book so far. I'm about 100 of the 400 pages in, so about a quarter in, getting there. Um, I'm a slow reader, so it's going to take a while. But it's, it's fucking... The man can write a sentence. He writes some pretty compelling shit, like his prose if I'm using that word properly, is fucking great. It's just, he has great turns of phrase and interesting, like ways of like, you know, parsing, you know, complex ideas. He's an amazing um, lyricist. So if that's any indication oh, yeah. of his, of his writing, you know? Yeah. It's definitely reflected in the book. Go ahead, Bob. Is it, I was going to ask, is this sort of like a, a standard, like haunted house kind of thing, or is it more like about a cult or something? So, I don't know the former yet because I'm like I'm a quarter in. I don't. I haven't hit anything to make me suspect that there's supernatural stuff going on yet. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm probably I'm less than a hundred pages in, so like it's you know it's still it's still setting the pieces into play. But I will say that like so far, the story is about a writer, a true crime author, who is convinced by his manager to uh, buy this house which used to be a a commercial residence a commercial store a porn store as a matter of fact where a grisly murder had taken place in order to write a book about it and you know get his next project rolling uh it's in set in california and the it, so far most of the book has been about the guy himself and like he's kind of like foreshadowing that like this is not a normal thing for him something some something goes either wrong or in a, in a direction he doesn't expect later on. I don't know to what extent, but he, it, it really is just like detailing his process of like parsing through the information, acquiring documents, uh, tra- talking to locals without raising their ire, all kinds of things like that. And it's just really fucking interesting. Honestly, just from, it seems like, and I don't know this, like he's talking from his own research into what true crime writers, how they operate. And it, it just kind of feels like a true thing, like, like something that true crime writers actually do. And that part is fascinating. Um, anyway, so I'm really into it. I'm excited to read more. I, I think I'm definitely more into this one than I was ex- the exorcism, but we'll see if it lands for me as well as it started. Um, I watched a movie documentary. I believe it was on prime called closed for storm, which is a documentary about the closure of jazz land, the theme park in new Orleans after um katrina and it's made by actually a youtuber that i have watched quite extensively i didn't realize that until i started the movie and saw his like production logo or whatever called bright sun films and he's done a lot of things like go to you know like go to abandoned places he went to like uh the river country and and disney world before they tore it down and things like that or he he had footage of it or whatever and detailed it it's just like like nerdy theme park shit and this movie kind of reflects that it's not the best in the world it's really an overlong youtube video and it, it i think it's a little bit better than that than his usual stuff but not markedly i think that he's just kind of developing his stuff 
anyway, but I think it was pretty, uh, for, for me as somebody who likes his channel anyway, it, it worked nicely. Um, uh, I've continued watching Zach Stone is going to be famous. The Bo Burnham series from MTV. It's still good. Um, I'm just, I guess there's sort of an ongoing plot thread that I'm now like, that's starting to ramp up a little bit, but for the most part, it's him doing really fucking stupid shit. And it's a lot of fun. And then last I watched a series that I've long wanted to, um, and actually it's a internet series created by the onion. And I know I've brought up sex house on this podcast before, which was made around the same time, by the same under the same banner and is like one of the most existentially horrific fucking shows or uh, yeah, shows, I guess that I've ever seen. It's basically a, a short movie uh, length, all things considered. And that's how I usually watch it. This time I watched one. It's like formatted just the same, but it's a different show called Porkin across America. <laughs> and it's about a daytime TV show host for the onion. So it's ridiculous. He's a ridiculous guy who is going to every state to have a pork dish in every state and shit's continually going wrong in really sad and fucked up ways. Uh, and like one of the first episodes, you know, his apartment floods and he keeps refusing to go home and deal with it. His wife starts to like drift away from him. His dog is put down for attacking another dog in a shelter. Like it's really fucked up. It's an, I don't want to say much more than that because like, boy, does the ending Oh man, it's a fucking crazy ride. So uh, it's tough for me to talk about without spoiling the very, man, the very horrific ending of that show. Um, and it is kind of a horror comedy though. So I would recommend that probably above, <laughs> above everything right now. It's very, very fun. Sounds like a it's bummer. also, it's a bummer, but it's like, it's a, it's a dark comedy like so it's it comes with laughs it's just ridiculous it's like if you've ever seen that show review that was on comedy central with um not john daly what's his name andy daly the review andy daly who, <laughs> no of oh, the original review bro no where he's like his whole thing is like oh nobody does r- critical reviews of just life events and so he lets people choose things for him to do and he reviews them and it has this really dark edge where it's like Oh, eat 15 pancakes. And then his sec, he goes, okay, I'll see what that's like. And I will give it a five stars. And then it's like, divorce your wife. And he's so committed to the show that he just fucking sabotages his whole life. It's basically that. So it's like too comedic effect, but it's real. It is dark. I love it. Basically. I love both of those things. So I'm going to, that's pretty much all for me. I have a friend. I'm going to say I have a friend uh, going on jeopardy on Thursday. So that's kind of cool. Dope. My buddy, my buddy what? Zach's going to be on there. Tune in. Uh, he's Wait. already posted a bunch of pictures of him and um, Blossom or whoever. Not our mutual associate, Zach, right? No, no. You guys don't know this guy. Not the actor. <laughs> no. What the it, fuck? Are you it talking? sounds like we don't know this guy. <laughs> okay. All right. You no, don't no. know this man. I okay, don't know what you're I talking about. I just want to make sure I didn't know him. I thought we had a no. mutual Also, he'll be on the TV, so... Just watch. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then get to know him. Dude, I don't have cable. What are you, 90 years old? That's not, that's a, that's a, I don't have Jeopardy. Cable either. Okay. Jeopardy, a network TV show. Are you worried about? You can literally watch Jeopardy on YouTube now. Oh, uh, okay. It's basically ripped immediately. I'm not aware. I'm too young. Goddamn Gen Zers. <laughs> I don't have time for trivia, says the man who uh, does our trivia. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, uh, I guess ju- so. The torch has passed. Juice, what you been watching? Uh, let's see. I wrapped up Mindhunter season deuce. I burned through that whole series. So quick, like in a week and a half, um, not as good as the first one. I'll probably eventually do a mini cast on that one as well. Spoiler. I already did one on season one that Whoa. I'll drop later, Whoa. but, um, yeah, it, I, I am so bummed. They didn't get to finish that show because season two, more than anything, really, worst teasing some stuff left on some more cliffhangers and stuff like that. And I'm like, man, that sucks that they didn't get to kind of follow that through. Um, what is this show? I, I'm you blank mind hunter season. Mind hunter, okay. yeah. I, I think that there's like, I've heard at least one rumor that Rumbling. they may eventually go back really? and do one. Okay. Maybe, but I mean, that's the rumor mill. So take it with that yeah. salt. Um, like the absinthe. Yeah, I jump back. Yeah, I jump backwards. Call back. <laughs> and as I said before, I'm still working through Simpsons season eight. Solid. 
even though I was surprised at like how solid nine was, eight is good. I just had a classic episode, the chili cook off, uh, where he hallucinates and I remember that. Yeah, shit. one that's show the desert. Yeah. That, that, that's that on with Johnny Cash. Dope. Yeah, he does the voice of the uh, fox. The or fox. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, coyote, yeah. coyote. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that shit. Um, that's a good season. Some good episodes coming up in that one. Um, outside of that, Bob inspired me a scotch to. I watched. Um, oh my lord, Texas Chainsaw Massacre: The Beginning, which was Ooh. the sequel or prequel? Prequel. Pre- good lord. Prequel. Prequel to the remake Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It came out around, I'd say, two thousand six. Yeah, I think it's oh six. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had seen it before, but it had been a long time. It was one of those kind of like edgy teenager things, you know, I watched. And so it did not hold up um, as well as I kind of remembered it being. It was pretty flat. Uh, man, it's... that poor, poor franchise is not good. <laughs> it's just... That's a rough installment. One it, of the worst. Yeah, it's One of the just worst. not good, um, which blows my mind how bad it is, actually. But um, So I watched that. I also started watching that Archive 81, um, which is on Netflix to kind of replace Mindhunter, which is a sad, sad fact, because um, it's okay I'm about three episodes in. I don't know if I'll finish it, to be honest. One thing I am, I've am i learned about myself, we discussed it a little bit on some other things, I think, the past, the past summer. I am not crazy about this new trend of things set in the 90s. I just I don't know what it is. I I lived it. I it relate to the young to the oldies. About, I don't care about it. It's um it's not that interesting to me. You don't like see, being baited. To see like busted ass, you know, um old recorder tapes and I don't I don't know. I just don't give a shit about the 90. I don't want to see it again. I don't know. <laughs> so it's unfortunate because I feel like we ran our course, you know, with the 80s, with the Stranger Things and the kids on bikes and all this stuff that, you know, sent the wave music and shit that was popping. I feel like it's that time with the 90s, which means I'm probably oh, yeah. going to be... Uh, probably going to be not digging a whole lot of stuff for the next like eight years unfortunately but well, just dude we're getting into the 2000s already i mean like fucking pin 15 is set in like the year 2000 is it? Like, there's a, yeah there's a there's I a lot of show. more receptive to the two th- out of something about the 90s i'm just like i don't know i don't want to see that um you just but, don't like zubaz that much i guess uh, the 90s <laughs> themselves were great i don't want to see it <laughs> um <laughs> But Zima yeah. Zubaz. <laughs> yeah, I think that's about all I've been watching, Robert. Yo. What you been watching, my guy? I've been watching some of that Archive 81 on Netflix as well, and I haven't finished it yet. Similar to you, though, like, my interest is waning. I think I completed episode six, so there's like two left. When it first started, I was way in, like the first two episodes specifically, I was way into it. And the the thing that interests me most is actually like the way this guy um, restores these videotapes, like in, like watching him do it. I would, he doesn't really I mean, do it. Though. I mean, he might. Yeah, you know, he, he does it's like, a movie, Rob. They do a montage of him like cleaning some film and like putting it in a new case and shit like that. I was like, I don't know. I just like would be way into doing that. It's well, like, yeah. What? The Bob? physical media yeah. has yeah. a siren call. For you exactly. want to work for one of those off label boutiques? Um, yeah, I the do. Side vinegar syndrome piece. S- yeah. Oh, everything man. you just said is accurate and true. <laughs> Uh, the, I don't know the, the balsamic the, disease. Uh, the the show itself though is like uh, losing me. I'm not super intrigued by you it. I, I feel like it could have been like resolved already, and it's just not. It's kind of like lingering a little bit too long. I had a friend tell me basically the exact same thing you just said, where it was like really? you know strong start, and but like she had finished it and said that the ending was terrible. So yeah. <laughs> it has like, not inspired me to watch it. I honestly like don't. Like if I don't watch the last two shows, I 
I'll be, I'll be fine. I don't think oh I'm gonna. God, I don't no. think I'm gonna finish it either. That's not good. Yeah, that's not uh, good praise. I will say though, like during what during episode three, I was doing mad research on Solo, trying to figure out like what we're gonna do on this show. So like I missed really what that was about, and I tried to jump back in, and it it might not have worked out. Other that's than fair. that, um, I rewatched. I get, hmm? yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was say I rewatched a bunch of Texas Chainsaw movies and also watched a few that I'd never seen before in preparation for this new Texas Chainsaw movie that's dropping uh, in February, uh, February eighteenth. Hey, yeah. How many Texas Chainsaw movies are there? Eight. 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 Number, Eight? Holy shit! There's number more nine than I is about to drop. Yeah. Okay. Um, Most of them are terrible. Not even mediocre. That's terrible. That's the impression I've gotten. Yes, and I, from from talking to people about it. I had this realization last week that like I'd only seen about half of the Texas Chainsaw mm-hmm. franchise and I was like, holy shit. Like I just didn't I didn't I didn't realize that. So I was like, well, before this new one drops, let me rewatch the ones that I'd seen and like watch some of the new ones. So I did that. And actually I just recorded a mini cast covering the entirety of the Texas Chainsaw franchise that'll be dropping on February 18th in your Patreon feed Ooh. Ooh. Uh, to help you get ready to watch the new one. Um, it's just like, it's a, it's a bit of a blind spot for me. I feel like it's kind of a blind spot for a lot of people though that are like way into horror. It's they're so bad. Probably. I don't think it's a blind spot. I think it's like a, uh, yeah. let's look at something else. Every time they <laughs> make them, it seems they're made so shoddily and with like so little love. Yeah. yeah. At least like every few like nightmare or Friday movies can yeah, be a crowd interesting or good. Yeah, I feel like the last at least two I think were straight to disc. I don't think they got theatrical releases. That's, and mm, also this one is going straight to Netflix, so it's also not getting theatrical. Oh yeah, but that's so it's like, kind of it flies under the not, radar. You know, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I mean, straight to Netflix isn't necessarily a ding anymore, though. Like it, it's yeah, yeah, especially with pandemic rules being what they are. And that's like, true. It's it could be, but it's not. It's definitely not like a death sentence or anything at all. Yeah, I've also only seen four of, I guess, eight. So I'm yeah. I might need to do my research as well. Um. Uh, so yeah, I watched. I watched a bunch of those. I'll reserve my opinions because I talked about it on the mini cast coming up. Um. After watching all the Texas Chainsaw movies and Sallow, I was like, I need to cleanse my palate like a motherfucker. So I watched <laughs> Vegas Vacation, which is on HBO Max. Oh, I love it. Changing 500. I fucking love that movie. Wallace Shaw is the fucking best in that movie. I yeah. love him so much. He's such a motherfucker, but in a, <laughs> yes. in a good way. Oh, God, I love him. <laughs> Uh, so I watched that and also Jackass 3 because we got a brand new Jackass movie dropping this weekend. Finally, it kept getting pushed back. Jackass Forever is coming out this weekend. Um, Jackass 3 is dumb fun and it uh, it was exactly what the doctor ordered. So God, that is that show is like it is a f- it's a fucking shot of adrenaline. It's the best. It's yeah. Uh, honestly, everything everything that Jackass has made pretty much as a franchise is is just a fucking smile in a can. I agree. I, I'm going to try and watch the new one. How are you going to hate that shit? I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Especially, I have been. Especially that BAM show, huh, Randy? Um, that is not a jackass show as far Negative. as I'm concerned. <laughs> that shit was so like painfully scripted. Even like, <laughs> like even as a child, I... You just, just wanted to rant. Justin just set you just up. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give you what you want. You already you did. <laughs> you got to give me a, you got to be a, become a Patreon, a patron before I'll, I'll say more uh, <laughs> before he delivers the goods. That's uh that's I have really plenty all. to say. That's all I've been watching. Um, we're going to, we're going to get into a little bit of news. Let's talk about some news. Let's do it. Extra, extra, read all about it. Oh yeah, that's not a bump we get to use that's, a lot. Uh, it's not. We it's rare. It. It's rare. This is one of the one of the things that uh, you know we solicited our Slack at the beginning of the year, and we we're like, hey, what do you guys want to see from Straight Chilling uh, in the future? You know, this is one of the things they mentioned actually, like more regular news segments. So here we go. We're doing it. Uh, speaking of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 
We got a brand new trailer for Texas Chainsaw 2020 Deuce dropping on Netflix February Mm -hmm. 18th. Came out today. Uh, I believe we all saw it. Gentlemen, like, what do you think? First, what's the name of this? I did not pay attention. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Boo! Fucking (laughs) bullshit. Stop it. Fucking (laughs) stop it. Classic. The The trend is dead. Stop it. You're five years too late. Honestly, um, I don't that part doesn't really bother me on its own. Like I've seen movies do this and like it, 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 like obviously we've all seen it at this point, but I just don't give a shit so much about that on its own. The problem is for what I can tell and from what we've all seen so far in the Slack, like we kind of there's kind of a consensus agreement that the trailer at least it really really makes this look like it's aping Halloween 2018 hard yeah yeah like Sally? super she's sally's back. back she's back sally's back As is this the same in- actress i couldn't tell no, because no, she's it's not, not, it's not, not an international so. celebrity it's, it's like not. jamie lee it's curtis not. so yeah okay. see that's some bullshit about it okay so sally's back and she's like i can't wait to get your leather face i'm gonna get your ass it's I'm like get he's your ass. in the same how he, he lives still in there. Texas? <laughs> it, well, it, it looks like he's in the same town, but there's a whole the whole town is a ghost town. So he like kind of shifted to a new place in the trailer. But it's it a like. small town. I, I agree. Like you <laughs> could there's find like, him. There's twelve buildings. You could there. find him. Yes. I feel like when four or five teens are murdered and one is picked up screaming and bloody, chased by a man wearing a leather face. Uh, maybe that gets around to the police and maybe they go and knock on the Sawyer family residence and yeah. maybe, you know, maybe they, you know, bring them in for questioning. Maybe yeah, that's I, the no, plot of not. Texas Chainsaw I want, 3D. Just I, say. Oh. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I just think that like, honestly, it doesn't matter. Like it, it's just a trailer. So for all I know, it there's is. a really good reason, yeah. but the it ca- doesn't seem like the canceled yeah. joke. Try something. And oh, you're canceled. God. Uh, the groans. At least uh, the dude gets murdered immediately. The thing is, like, um, okay, the franchise is so bad that this it's got a low bar, you know? If mm-hmm. I was saying, okay, yeah, it definitely has 2018 Halloween vibes, and even if it hits a little under that, it's still going to be one of the better in the franchise. So mm-hmm. it's, you yeah, know, yeah. you got to aim low. However, 2018 was now four years ago, and... This is not a fresh take, fresh material type stuff. It feels lazy. There are some cool ideas that I like the idea of exploring in a Texas Chainsaw Massacre like an empty town because, you know, the illusion is or or, I mean, the idea is, you know, they're they're cannibals out of necessity in a way, but also it kind of feeds their depravity. But, you know. No, oh, everybody left the town and something happened. And we even discussed this last week where I said, oh, Eden Lake kind of reminds me of the idea of, you know, spaces in West Virginia that are just forgotten by society and stuff. And that to me is the kind of intriguing thing of the idea of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like what happens when you enter this lawless place where people do as they please but what I don't I don't think they're gonna deliver completely on that. But I did like the aspect of the empty town. That was cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could. I mean, I, I. It's a trailer. I always like trailers are trailers and movies are movies. You know, a trailer can be great and a movie can be terrible and vice versa. But you know, yeah, it just seems very much like at least the marketing is, and, and like certainly some of the just basic facts of the movie from what we've seen appear to be very much just like Halloween 2018 rehash. And the fact that it's also a Netflix original it raises even more concern because they will throw money at just about anything. They like that's like as much as they do put out like the occasional, like pretty big and good film or whatever. They also bolster it with like dozens and dozens of movies you never think about or hear about. It's this direct to DVD equivalency of the day. It really is. So it, really could be anywhere on the quality spectrum and there's not a whole lot of reason to think it'll be on the high end yeah i'm hoping it just doesn't completely suck to be honest yeah uh if they killed sally in like end of act one and just 
Sally? Did some crazy shit. That'd be fun. I would. Yeah, she I would be into get, that. If she tries to get revenge and that just e- e- like easily gets murked, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But that, I think this movie is going to be taking itself way too seriously. That, that would be a wonderful subversion of the requel fucking yeah. plight that we've yeah. been dealing with That'd ever since. Great. You know, Star Wars did it. You know, now everybody has to do it, including Halloween. Including uh, Scream, including... Just call it the same e- just damn every, name. Everybody. Jesus Christ. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah, so that's dropping on Netflix February 18th. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. Next bit of news, Hocus Pocus 2 officially wrapped filming and is set for a release this fall. This this spooky season. Oh, looks like we'll be covering it this Poker, spooky poker season, boys. Deuce. We got to. Hang on. Let's take the bets now. We're all going to come back to this. Do they use the phrase Yabos no. in the new Hoker Poker? I say no. hard no. I say hard no. Yeah. yeah I'm I almost have to say no as well. But you know what? I'll say Smart yes just no. because <laughs> you got to have some odds. You Dude, know? I, I want uh, them to. <laughs> I, I want Just because I'm a gambling man. I'm a gambling <laughs> Gambler, man. If 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 it turns out, gotta know when to hold them. You know, if it turns out that they do, I owe you a soju. Okay. All right. Ooh. Deal. Yeah. High stakes in so, Korea, which so, means you got to fly. There. That's fine. I'll be there. The real question Can I is: come? Yes, sure. Duh. Please. Like we'll do a Korean show on on Hell a mountain top or something. What? Yeah. <laughs> on a mountain. <laughs> Yeah. What do you think Korea is, Bob? It's not Mount Olympus. <laughs> Justin is always talking about hiking glorious mountains. So. Uh-huh. No wind to fold them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the real question is, is this movie going to be a pile of shit or not? Also, so this is this is apparently dropping on Disney+, Plus, which is a kick in my ass. Um, but you know, is it going to be okay? What do we think? Thoughts? The only thing I will say is the content that Disney+, Plus has put out so far has been solid to okay. be fair to right. be completely fair um i it's been fine i don't want a hocus pocus 2 i don't want it it's too no, far it. removed and it just doesn't i don't know i don't want it this but. is it's nostalgia bait and the thing is nobody's going to be get what they want out of it because like they don't have nostalgia for this yet they just have nostalgia for the characters. So the only real option of giving anybody who sees this movie what they want is to do just fan servicey horseshit the whole time. Or their alternative the alternative is making a somewhat kind of fresh take on it in some way. And people are gonna be pissed about that. And it's not gonna be you know, like it's just it's kind of a losing proposition. I'm I'm, I'm like yeah. I don't think you guys need to hear me go on another rant about fucking and some prequel way, sequels all that shit in some ways it kind of bums me out like even having like Courtney Cox come back to to scream, scream? I'm like oh I just I don't know I feel like bummed <laughs> I don't know so, I will say the witches like they have a couple of pictures of them on yeah. set in costume and they look fucking dope I, I will say I'm happy they're back and they look great yeah I mean not look, to like knock it it just sometimes it's like you know, you had your you had your time, and it, yeah. it, it was what it was. There's no need. It's like that movie. It's like a sad. It's like when it's like when uh, what's his name, Christopher Walken, is fucking Hook in Peter, a live musical Peter Pan. It just kind of mm-hmm. bums you out. As much as I love Christopher Walken he, as Hook, yeah, dude, they I did a that. live musical Peter Pan like four years ago, and a musical a musical and Christopher Walken was Hook in a Peter Pan live TV musical and that shit bummed me out because it's that terrible. doesn't I mean <laughs> that doesn't bother Peter Pan is like a career it's like Sherlock Holmes just people no, I just meant of like a kind of an aging star kind of them forcing th- <sighs> to reclaim this kind of glory I'm just like we love it for what it me. was. I don't know. I don't feel the need. No, to see, I'm, I'm not precious about Peter Pan or Christopher ponies. Walken's career. Like, <laughs> I think I don't think that they're. Show- I, I mean, the man could not do that if he chose. I don't yeah. think that he's like trying to reclaim glory so much as he's just trying to work and have fun. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Like to me, it's like I, I don't know. The, the whole thing with this movie is Hocus Pocus, the original. Like taken strictly sans nostalgia, not that fucking great of a movie. Like, if this movie is Whoa. every bit as good as Hocus Pocus one, it's gonna be fifteen years of running constantly on ABC Family before anybody gives a shit. That's fair. 
I think that first <laughs> movie is great. But yeah, I mean, that, that is the... I do, the, too, because I'm nostalgic for it, and I love Halloween. <laughs> That's exactly what happened to the movie that dropped in the 90s. Like, nobody really gave shit. It was yeah. kind of a flop, but, like, That's everybody our age watched it and was like, that's good. And then we got older and, like, forced everyone around us to watch it. So our peers who have kids, their kids will eventually love it. Or they won't because they're rejecting... Like it's like, Parents. do we did, did did we really love like the Charlie's Angels movies? No, no, <laughs> like no. Whoa, speak for yourself, uh, Lucy I mean, Lou. I, I I like the. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't mean I, the movie's good. Well, like no. Well, I'll tell you what is good is fucking. Um, oh, what's his name? McFly. That guy, Chris uh, McLovin. What is that? What is that fucking dude's name? The actor. <laughs> Uh, oh you're, yeah you're talking Marty about McFly. Uh, uh, Is that who you're no talking no about? uh george mcfly uh the fucking the uh fuck i can't remember his yeah name. see see what are you talking about Sucks the dad Stone. the dad the, in what in fucking in back, back back to, to the, the future, future. Everybody is screaming at us on the internet right now. I don't know Crispin what. Glover. Crispin Crispin, goddamn Crispin Glover. Thank you. St. Crispin's Day Glover. Crispin, Crispin Glover is Glover. one of the villains in Charlie's Angels. Oh, and he's fucking crazy and man? weird. In it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, he is. The guy who doesn't That's speak right. but screams like uh, a shriek yeah, he is. and rips people's hairs That's out. Right. That was all his the idea. Movie you the you love, Justin. Lucy Lou. You love the movie. <laughs> you love it. You know it and love the it. The Thin Mang. Uh, uh anyway yeah. yeah that's that's dropping we'll probably end up reviewing it i would imagine hopefully it, hey it's, you hopefully guys want to see hmm? you guys want to see the christmas story sequel that they're making with no, the original never. ralphie never. oh it's coming never. oh that's no, coming too no, it's infecting christmas films no, i got a i got no. another quick quick hitter this is the last bit of news um uh, so Mike Flanagan, our good friend Ooh, Mike. <laughs> and counselor, Mike Flanagan, <laughs> uh, he's, he just started production on a brand new Netflix series. This is his fifth mm. Netflix mm. series. Uh, it's called The fifth? Fall of the House of Usher. Usher. Yes. Oh, shit. So, so that is confusing, right, Randy? Because we only know of three. There's a fourth one in the can already that I assume we're going to oh, be shit. watching this fall. Oh, damn. Um, so this is his Hell fifth. Hell yeah. So yeah, he uh, yeah. he did Haunting of Blind Manor, Haunting. Haunting of Hill House. He did Midnight Mass, which those are the three that we've seen. The upcoming Midnight Club, which is already done, I assume we'll be watching that this fall. And they're now filming The Fall of the House of Usher. Oh. Uh, the way he describes The Fall of the House of Usher, like if you've, if you've read the Edgar Allan Poe story, or if you've seen the, the movie from the 70s, I think. With old starring, Vinny. Yeah, Vincent Price. Um, it's like a slow character story, very much about, uh, the family and the house and the link between the two and how they're both like decrepit falling apart, et cetera, et cetera. But the way he describes, uh, his series is that it's going to be like rock and roll, like, like blood and guts and murder and like pedal to the metal because like everything wow. we, everything we've That's seen pretty from different him, for him exactly yeah like everything we've seen from him up to this point is like kind of slow burn methodical um very well thought out and paced in, in a certain way a very intentional way and it seems like he's kind of changing all of that for this which is interesting and i hope that he can pull it off because that sounds badass um, I don't know. What do you guys have thoughts about this? Excited? Huh, you know what? As interesting as that sounds, I almost wish it was the opposite because I was thinking to myself, you know what? We don't get a whole lot of Edgar Allan Poe mm. iterations yeah. in today's media, and I feel like it almost. I I want to see it for what it is. Almost, you yeah. Know? I want to see someone understand. kind of bring the life of you know, or you know, bring Edgar Allan Poe's ideas to a new medium that didn't exist. You know, he married time. his 13 year old cousin. Well, that we can't talk about that. When now. in Rome, huh, yeah. Randy? <laughs> or well, Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's been there before. I um, love B more. And, uh, but I, so I don't know. So that doesn't sound super appealing to me, that idea. But of course, I trust what he's done so far. So that's the thing. It's like he has a blank check for me. I, I, I kind of agree, like on a gut level, but at the same time, my gut loves me some fucking Flanagan. 
especially in the Netflix format, he's yet to disappoint. So unless the Midnight Club, you called it, yeah, unless that like sucks wind, then I'm not going to <laughs> fucking. I'm not gonna doubt his decision. What? It I don't. The sucks wind is hilarious. I don't. It's, Why? It, it should be used more often. I don't know. It's underused. It's a very common old man phrase, and I'm aging gracefully. Thank you. You are. You're a silver fox. <sighs> um, Ace yeah, Ventura hair today. I, I, I'm stoked to watch anything from Flanagan at this point. Um, bring it on, man. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, his wife is starring in this as well. Uh, she's a character that I don't remember, to be honest. The name I don't recognize. Um, I think it'd be hilarious if he cast Sherry Moon Zombie. Oh. Uh, dude, <laughs> he's way too smart for that. <laughs> No, no, no. I just think it'd be a, does that that's like, because, oh, you, like yeah. there's only two directors I know that yeah. consistently do that. And it's and it's yeah. zombie and it's fucking well, Flanagan. I would love them to swap wife swap. I mean, shouts outs to Kate Siegel, Flanagan's wife. Like she's she, great. She's fucking great, man. She knows what she, she's doing. She is great. She is. Um, that's going to do it for our news. We got one more segment, which is, of course, our hotline screams. <laughs> if you are listening and would like to call in and leave us a voicemail to be featured on next week's show, hit us up at 904-638-3231. We have two voicemails this week. First up, we're going to hear from our courteous Canadian Cole. Let's hear what he has to say. Alliterative. Hey guys, Cole calling. Um, I haven't called in a really long time. I was, uh, I was actually, I haven't been listening to the episodes for a while. Um, I was finishing Nightmare Alley and, uh, your Scream episode was already out. And I'm fairly certain that I've never been that far behind since I caught up on all the episodes you guys have. But, uh, um, the reason for my hiatus, uh, so I was listening to it. It's like a, it's a 44 hour audiobook. And it's, I think it's like my third time in the last couple of years. And, uh, like, I don't think this is news to anyone, but it's, it's really good. And especially the audiobook on Audible, the guy, uh, it, like, he does all the voices so, so well. And even Richie has several voices himself. And, uh, he just does an amazing job, so and the, and the endings, whatever. <laughs> but the rest of the book is so so good. But uh, I'm finished now, and I'm back listening to you guys. Uh, I just want to say, um, happy to hear the thing. I always want to hear you guys talk about classics or uh, real shitty movies. So <laughs> glad to listen to Doom as well. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd call in. That's it. My biggest book recommendation. Randy's already read it. So uh, uh, and then I would say go to go to some of the classics Juice mentioned. Um, I like uh, I like Dracula more than Frankenstein. Um, Invisible Mang is really good. Doctor Dracula, and Mr. Hyde was good. <laughs> I listened to all these. I haven't read them, but <laughs> either way, they're all good. <laughs> Keep chilling, guys. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, that's one of the only audiobooks I've ever listened to is the It audiobook. And it, I think it was Steven Weber, the actor who did the voice for that. And it, he is fucking great. I mean, he's a good actor anyway. But yeah, good call. Yeah, man. Thanks for the recommendations. Thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, we hadn't heard from you in a long time. You had a pretty solid streak. Uh, I think the main takeaway from this is to uh, stop listening to Stephen King and only listen to the <laughs> Straight Chilling podcast. Guy, eat your veggies before you can have your <laughs> dessert. Okay, and That's we're right. the veggies. Yeah, we are your Brussels sprouts. <laughs> we're the stinky veggies. Damn, Stephen. We're King the stinky is... asparagus that makes your piss stink. Damn, <laughs> Damn. suck on that wind. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I just don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Cole. Uh, next up, we're going to hear from a first-time caller, uh, Pappy. Let's hear what he has to say. Hey, uh, this is Pappy. I'm a Patreon member, uh, first time caller calling about Eden Lake. Uh, thanks for reviewing it. Um, I watched it over a decade ago. Uh, I was looking at a list of most disturbing films and Eden Lake was on it. So I was like, I have to see this movie. 
and I loved it uh, back then. Um, but back then, I never thought about gentrification, and I thought it was very interesting that you guys brought that up on the review. Um, I would just kind of add a couple of things to that on a rewatch now. You know, when the couple pulls in, they see the sign for Eden Lake, and as they drive by, on the back you see it spray painted, fuck off, yuppie cunt, which obviously is a sort of a keep out uh, notice from the locals. But even more importantly, about 20 seconds later, they pull up to a fence, and they very clearly see a sign that says keep out. But that doesn't phase Michael Fassbender. He just turns around, he just turns and drives alongside the fence till he finds a way in. And I think when you combine those two things, I think we're looking at a very obvious metaphor here for gentrification, right? These people are coming in, in, in you know, in a way, they're the yuppie cunts that are being referred to. But also, very clearly, there's a sign that says keep out, and uh, Mr. Uh, Fassbender is just entitled, like, I don't care, I'm just going to come in there. And uh, take over. I just want to point that out because I don't think it was mentioned on the on the show regarding the keep out sign. Because I think that's very I think that's very important that he comes up to that, he sees the sign, and then he just tries to find his way in, uh, you know, disregarding the sign. So I just wanted to bring that up. I thought that was just an interesting point, but I really appreciate the discussion. Appreciate you guys uh, put on the show um, and uh, keep up the good work. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. I, I have forgotten about that. I remember the the spray paint, which was kind of concealed from their view, if I remember right. Yeah, it yeah was. they um, didn't see it as far as we know. They had to have seen yeah. it on the way out, but, but the, it doesn't show it. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I mean, I think that does add something extra to the gentrification discussion. I, as I, like my feeling towards it was that there was like it was a little uncomfortable in terms of like the, the class division thing. Um and I, I, I'm happy that there's more to point to in terms of that plot thread because I, I think a movie about that specifically is a just it's it's a lot easier to swallow for me than one that seems kind of disdainful towards the poor's as it were. So I, I was pretty happy. Or I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to, I don't know, to have another point in that direction because the more it goes in that direction, the less it seems so skeevy to me. Yeah, yeah, it's a solid point. I I don't believe we did mention that on the show, but uh, it de- I had forgotten. It's another feather in the cap, you know, regarding like gentrification for sure. So thanks for thanks for calling in, man. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, yeah, good point. There's a lot to talk about regarding Eden Lake, man. We could yeah do a whole other show probably. It's a good now. There's an extremely graphic movie, right? That has some in- good metaphors and no horrible shit around it. Correct. Well. That we know of. Like real life. <laughs> okay. Real life. Real life. Rob no, call yeah. Out that there out. might be an underage penis involved there. No, that That's was not. That was confirmed 18. We we actually did talk about that on the show. Yes. Yeah, we did. We did. And uh, if it wasn't, it would have changed the show quite a bit. What a back to back duo we have here. How do you feel about it, Bob? Maybe the laws are different in the UK. We don't know. I, what, what, I don't. As we all know, morality they? is dictated by are. laws. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Every, I mean, even every state has their own different age of consent. Yeah, and the US is perfect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're asking. I don't think it is. I, I mean, it's, it's important for our listeners to know that. <laughs> in, it's important in, for our listeners to know that morality and law are the same thing. No, I'm just saying in Korea <laughs> that it's 20. Like adulthood oh, really? is considered 20 years old, so they well, might think we're fucked up. They should. May, yeah, they should. Well, think we're <laughs> fucked I mean, up. there's no shortage of reasons not, for them. To not think specifically that. because of that, but you know, generally sure. speaking. fair enough. Not, not because of that. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for calling in, Pappy. Good to hear from you. I love hearing from first time callers. You know, if, if you guys are out there listening to the show, you've been listening for a while. Uh, you got something bouncing around your brain? Call in, talk to us. We love hearing from you. Uh, speaking of which, do you guys have any prompts you want to throw out there for next week's show? Mm, any ideas? I want to know. Uh, I want to know if any like we're, we're viewing the fly next week. Yes, right. The original so 1958 I, fly. Correct. And I want to know, uh, you know, because that's a Vincent Price film, I want to know people's favorite Vincent Price films and why Hmm. I would like to know about that because I have not seen a ton of his like sort of like, you know, his heyday movies. I've seen a lot of him like popping up here and there, but that's one of the, it's one of the black spots of my own horror canon. So I think that's just want to know. 
Yeah, that's a good one. I think this might be a good opportunity to ask too. Which movie do you think this the remake is better than the original? Yeah. Yeah. Which movies do you think the remake is better than the original? Obviously, it doesn't the fly. have to be. It doesn't have fly to be is horror, frequently. but horror is preferred. Preferred, yeah. yeah. Preferential treatment for horror. A lot of people talk about the Fly remake being better. Honestly, like I haven't seen the original in a couple years. I'm excited to revisit it. Like the, you know, the Cronenberg's Fly is great for sure, but like I don't know. Like I'm I'm ex- I love the shit out of some Vincent Price. It's I fucking love that man. I'm excited to talk about it. Honestly, uh, but yeah, uh, if you do want to call in, leave us a voicemail for next week. Hit us up at nine zero four six three eight three two three one. Uh, We'll be back next week with a brand new show as always. Obviously, we're talking about The Fly from 1958. This one was chosen by Miles B. Uh, Big thanks, Miles. Uh, We definitely appreciate you signing up on Patreon, showing us some love, helping support the show. It does mean a lot to us. Um, Until next week, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter at str 8 underscore chilling. On Instagram, at Straight Chilling Podcast. You can send us an email through our website, straightchillingpodcast.com. And until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling.